bro. This is exciting. Dude, I'm, I'm so pumped. I want to ask you, I don't know if this is a, a hostile question or a friendly question because <laughs> I, I don't know your answer to it yet, but I first got into kind of the, the aspiration of making money online, you could say, like five or so years ago, like 2017, 2018. And I remember e-commerce was like the first thing that came up then. It was like drop shipping and Alibaba and China and these products and you run ads on Facebook and it's just easy. And I never really went that route. I kind of did some other things, but now I've been left with the impression, like when I hear people talking about that, I'm like, oh, that was the thing five years ago, right? And people are going to listen to this podcast today and I'm like, are they going to think, you know, e-commerce, like why are they still talking about e-commerce in 2022, start of 2023? Is, am I just totally off there? Like, is do we miss the boat to the opportunity to jump into e-com and drop shipping? Like, was that a fad from 2018 or am I just completely misreading the market and it's still a good time and there's still opportunity? Definitely. So that's a very common question that we get, right? This is a question we get all the time. It's like, Amir, is dropshipping dead? Is e-commerce dead? Is it, you know, can we still make money with this model? And the way I always answer this question is they're looking at e-commerce the wrong way. They're thinking about it as some just get rich quick scheme, something that's new, something that's, you know, innovative. That's something that's no one's seen before. That's not what e-commerce is. At the end of the day, what e-commerce is, is someone giving you money for a product. Now, let me ask you this. Is that ever going to go away? where someone's going to give you money in order to get something out of it. I don't see that changing. Never. No. We do it every day. You spend money on things every single day, no matter where you go. If you want something, you buy it. So as long as that exists, e-commerce is going to exist. The only difference with e-commerce is we're doing it through a different platform, right? We're doing it on a website. We're doing it online, right? If commerce ever goes away, e-commerce will go away, right? And nowadays, a lot of people think that, oh, e-commerce is dead. Dropshipping is dead. You can't make money with it anymore. When it's completely false, e-commerce is bigger than it ever has been. There's never been this much money being spent online than there is today. Way more than 2018, 2019, 2020, the pandemic changed it all, right? And the cool thing is, is that people think that it's dead, right? And when people think that e-commerce is dead, they stop trying to do it. What does that mean? When less people are trying to do it, there's less competition for you. Therefore, there's more room for you to step in and get a piece of that pie, so if you hear a lot of people saying e-commerce is dead, dropshipping is dead, know that it's a good thing. Because if everyone was saying, oh, it's amazing, that means it's more competitive, right? But when less people are talking about it, that's an opportunity for you to step in because there's less competition. How long have you been doing e-commerce? Since late 2018. Okay. So it's been almost five years, four and yeah. a half years. Hell yeah. You know, I was thinking about something you just said. I definitely spent more money online this year than I spent online in 2018. So it's like... You know, my personal consumption of e-commerce has certainly increased. Yeah, and you're not the only one that's on that boat as well. And here's the thing. As time goes by, the more that younger people are going to have credit cards, debit cards. And where do you think younger people are going to spend their money? They're spending more money online than offline, right? When people are spending their money in the same place, they're spending their time, right? Exactly. Yeah. And older people, you know, they might not be that inclined to buy stuff online, even though there's a ton of older people that are buying stuff online. But you got to understand as time goes, e-commerce is only going to grow further mm -hmm. because the younger generation is all getting credit cards or getting debit cards and they're going to be spending more money online than the older generation. I think another point too that's really interesting and I'm hoping to interview this guy in a couple of weeks named Drew Glover and he is a big kind of advocate for the future of work and he makes this point that, you know, previously 20, 30 years ago, the only jobs that young people had and I'm saying young people it's in like 12 to 18 were like, work at a grocery store, work at a restaurant, have a newspaper out, be a babysitter. But now you're seeing, you know, 12 to 18 year olds making money with online products, with info products, making money online. So you're also finding a lot of these kind of wealthy people that are like literally 12 to 18 because mm -hmm. they start YouTube channels, they blow up on Instagram. And those people are going to be doing all their shopping online too. Exactly, man. And, you know, I think it's just an amazing opportunity. We're in a time right now that humanity has never, ever experienced before. Never before have you been able to start a business and start selling things and making money with less than $100 in your bank account, right? I started with less than $100 in my bank account, right? There has never been a time in history where you can do that. And there has never been a time in history where someone so young can learn how to make such great progress in sh such a short amount of time, right? So right now we're living in an era that we've never seen before, ever. But here's the problem. There's also a bad side to that, right? Never before has humanity been so addicted to all these vices, Life has never been so comfortable. There's never been social media before. So you have these people that are spending 24 hours a day just consuming on social media, right? 
So the only thing that you need to succeed in 2022 and 2023 is to have the discipline to stay away from all those distractions. Because even though there's more opportunity than ever, there's more distractions than ever. And that's why you see these 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds making 100 grand a month because they understand they don't want to go through the route of consuming stuff. They just create stuff and the internet doesn't care how old you are. If you create something that people want, you're going to get money from it. I want to discuss kind of your strategies for speaking to those vices later on. And because a lot of people like hear that and don't like just can't break the pattern. But I want to talk directly to that person who has less than $100 in their bank account and wants to start an online business and sees the potential and understands they see the macro shifts, but they don't really know where to start. So I mean, you've, like you said, been doing this for four going on five, maybe close to six years here soon. And you've picked up a lot of game, I'm sure in the process of getting from zero to where you are now. What would your like week one, day one, step one look like if you had to, you know, take it all away from you, except for your knowledge, of course, and get started and build up from zero and try to make a living for yourself, make a 10 K month, make a hundred dollars a day, whatever those kind of baseline metrics people strive for with e-commerce, where would you start? Definitely. So whenever you want to make money selling something, and that's what I would recommend is selling something, find some, finding something to sell because it's kind of hard. What's kind of the alternative to that? Like, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to selling stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that would be working for someone else. Oh, okay. Sure. Trying to, you know, work some kind of job. Right. I, I personally don't recommend that even though a lot of people are doing great doing that. I just don't see that as the best way to, to get to that next level. If you're just starting out and you're broke and you don't have money, you have nothing to lose, right? So what I would tell that person is take as many risks as possible, right? Try to start that business, to try to start that YouTube channel, whatever it is, take as many risks as possible because you have nothing to lose at this point, right? Now, personally, what I would do is I would try to find a product to sell, right? Because if you have something that you can sell, now you have leverage, right? Now money is not tied to your time anymore. So it's not like, oh, I'll go work 10 hours and make $150 today anymore, right? It could be, I'm going to work 10 hours today to try to sell this product. And now, now I'm going to be making sales every single day, no matter what I'm doing. So you're creating leverage with your time, right? And when, when it comes to what I would sell, I would make sure that it touches on one of the, these three things. It has to either touch health, wealth, or relationships. That's the only reason people ever spend money. If you don't have a product that touches on one of those three things, you're most likely going to fail with your product because you're not going to know how to sell it. You're not going to give people a reason to want to buy it. And I can tell you, if I looked at your bank account right now, I can categorize every single transaction to one of those three things, health, wealth, or relationships. And it's very important that you know which one you're going after. Are you selling a product that's going to save someone money, right? Let's think of an example. I saw an ad for Manscaped the other day, and they were advertising it in a way where you don't have to spend $30 on a barber, $40, $40 on a barber every single time. Just buy it yourself and do it yourself. Now you're saving yourself $40. Oh shit, you know, I got to buy that thing. Now I can save money when I buy it, right? Or for example, your health. People buy, let's say, a sauna, right? Why would someone want to buy a sauna? Because their health and their heart health is worth more to them than the $3,000 that they're going to spend on the sauna, right? If you know that value proposition that you're giving someone, it's going to become very easy to sell it because the person sells themselves on it, Right? So now let's say you did find a product and it hits one of those three things. The next thing I would do is I would go to Shopify and I would make a website on my own for that product, right? I would make sure it's professional, it's branded. I would put a lot of effort into the website to make it look like a real brand because that's one of the biggest mistakes I see beginners making when they try to sell products online. Their website looks very unprofessional. It's ugly. It doesn't match, right? It doesn't look like something where it's legit, where when someone puts their credit card in and they buy your product, they're actually going to get what they bought. Right. So you have to put a very, very, you know, you have to be focused on that to make sure it looks like a professional brand that people would trust. Once you have that website and you can do that for free on Shopify.com, you can get a three month trial with Shopify for a dollar a month. And that's basically free. Right. You have a website ready. People can go on there. You can collect money. The money can go into your bank account. Cool. So now you have the product. You have the website. There's only one more step until you can make a shit ton of money. And that's the traffic. Now, when it comes to someone that's broke, they're not going to have a lot of money to go and dish on Facebook advertisements or um, YouTube advertisements. They're not going to be able to do that. So what I would recommend to that person that doesn't have enough money to spend on advertising is I would recommend they try to do it through t TikTok social organic, right? So you're not going to be running ads on TikTok. So you're going to be creating organic videos on TikTok. So you're going to be creating trendy viral videos that relate to the product. That's the most important thing. It has to be around, uh, about the product because if it's not about the product, there's no point in doing it. You're not going to make money, right? 
But let's say you make three, four, five, six clips. You post them on TikTok. One of them goes viral, gets you 100,000 views. Now you're making sales on your website because now your link is in your bio, right? And just for example purposes, let's say you're selling a $2,000 sauna, right? And you're getting it from your supplier for $1,000, right? And you make some TikToks and one of them goes viral about the sauna. And now you made, let's say, 10, 20 sales on the sauna. You just made 10, 20 grand from one video. Now you have money that you can play with. And I would take that money now to start spending on advertisements advertising the sauna in a way where I don't have to rely on TikTok to go viral. Now I have a consistent machine where every time I spend a dollar on advertising, I can get $3 back out. And I'll keep rep repeating that cycle. All of a sudden, you have a million dollars. Boom. That was the formula right there. Uh, another kind of, I don't know, misconception or kind of hot button issue you could say when I think of e-commerce is kind of the, the guru industry, the course industry, the expensive coaching and training and masterminds. Like, I think that's something else people associate with e-commerce that I know is also, I think, misrepresented all, all the time. Or maybe there's a couple individuals who aren't honest that make everyone who is honest seem like they're dishonest. And I, I'd like for you to address kind of one, speaking to your personal experience in terms of formulas, right? Because it's the way you just expressed how you would start over from day zero is like, so evident the the experience you've had going into that and it's so simple to you but i know you start out with buying formulas and can you speak to why you think in general some e-commerce courses have kind of that bad reputation and if that's valid or if there are like kind of good honest actors out there like if you've had positive experiences with training programs if they did end up saving you the time and skipping steps or if you're just sending random people 500 dollars for videos that didn't take you anywhere like what was your experience yeah, so honestly, I've never had a point where I spent money on a course or spent money on coaching where I didn't get my money back, right? Even if it wasn't the best course, if it wasn't the best video, as long as I vet the person and make sure that they've done whatever it is that they want to teach me it is, it doesn't really matter the quality of the course because they're going to give you the information that got them there and you can get gold nuggets from there that can make you a lot more than what you paid for the program. So when it comes to finding courses or coaching or learning from someone, the most important thing you want to do is you want to vet them and make sure they're actually getting results from the things that they're teaching, right? If they're not spending money on advertisements every single day, don't learn advertisements from that person, right? If you're going out there and you're buying a course from someone and you're not vetting them and you're getting bad results, that's your fault because you didn't do the research on the person, right? What is the person going to do? They just, you know, they're selling their course. It's your fault for not doing the research on that person and making sure that they're actually doing the thing that you want to learn from them, right? So if you have the money and you want to spend it on courses, just vet the person. That'll tell you everything, right? Whether the person is doing it, that's going to tell you whether you should learn from them. But if you're also completely broke, you don't really need courses. Everything's out there online for free. You can make your first 10, 20K online without spending a single dime on courses. Do I recommend that? Not really. I would recommend you hiring a coach, right? That's what I would recommend personally because... If you have the money, you don't want to spend a year, two years trying to figure it out, going through the trial and error, because that time is worth to you a lot more than the money that you're going to spend on a coach, right? So there's definitely bad apples, but a lot of people have the victim mindset, and I don't have that victim mindset, because I believe that victim mindset is the detriment to most people thinking that it's always other people's fault. It's always his fault. He scammed me. He, he sold me this course, right? Don't look at it like that, because you're only going to hurt yourself when you look at it like that. Take accountability, take responsibility. And if you want to find someone and learn from them, make sure you do your research and know that it's the right person to learn from. Let's talk about the, the victim mindset. Why do you think people end up in that trap in the first place and how do they get out of it? Because it's easy to blame other people because you feel better about yourself when you blame someone else. Let's say you mess up in life and you point a finger at someone else. Now that burden goes away from you to say, oh, it's my fault and I messed up. Now that burden's on someone else and you feel better about yourself. When in reality, you're only hurting yourself when you do that because you can't take feedback and improve yourself if you're always blaming other people. So that's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned when I started in business, that it's always my fault, right? If I go out on a Saturday night at two o'clock in the morning and a drunk driver hits me and kills me, it's my fault. Why didn't I think that someone that's gonna be, someone's going to be drunk at 2 a.m. on a Saturday? Why didn't I think of that, right? So that's the kind of mindset that I have is I always want to blame myself because that's the only thing I can control. I can't control someone else's behavior, right? I can't control whether someone's going to do something. The only thing I can control is what I do, right? So there's no point in blaming anyone else and saying that it's their fault because let's say it is their fault. What are you going to do about it? You can't do anything. But if you blame yourself, you're always going to find a way to get over it. Yeah, last night I was at dinner with a bunch of friends and uh, one of my buddies brought up an embarrassing story, right, about me. And I could be mad at him for bringing up the embarrassing story, 
or I could be mad at myself for having done the embarrassing thing. Mm. You know what I mean? In the first place. Exactly. Like, he wouldn't have that. He wouldn't have that uh, ammunition against me. Not again in an adversarial way, but he wouldn't have that story to tell and make me look foolish if I didn't go do that foolish, funny thing in the first place. Exactly. And at the same time, you also want to take note because if that person is doing that constantly and he's always putting you down, now you have to take responsibility and get rid of that person as well. Yeah, I like that. I also like to be thrown into the fire though because I was like, that was the first time in a while like I felt myself kind of react not super calmly to something. I didn't like freak out, but like usually I'm extremely measured. Mm -hmm. I was not extremely measured. <laughs> when that came out, I was like, ooh, <laughs> this is something to deal with. Uh, so I do kind of appreciate him for, for throwing me in the fire and, and pushing me out of my comfort zone like that. But again, I, you are speaking with a lot of confidence about the story and about why e-commerce is so useful. But we didn't really tell much of your story in terms of like when you were that person who was lost and didn't have the answers and hadn't bought the formulas and hadn't gone through the trial and error and the effort. What were you doing in life when you first decided like, okay, I need to make money on the internet. I don't want to keep working a normal job and I'm going to use e-commerce as the way out. Like, where were you in life at that point? Yeah, definitely. So I grew up most of my life in the Middle East in a country called Jordan. And I moved to uh, the United States when I was 18 years old, right? And I moved with the intention of becoming a civil engineer at Sacramento State University. And basically, I was going to co this college for three years. And after three years, I realized that I did not learn a single thing that's going to help me improve my life in terms of monetary-wise. Like, how do I get a good position? How do I get more money? How, do, how does the economy work? How to get promotions. How to get right? promotions, how to do taxes, how to sell things. I did not learn a single thing in college that's relating to me improving my life, right? And I'm the type of person, I'm a very critical thinker, right? I don't really listen to what other people are saying. Even though everyone is saying college is a way to go, you should go to college, especially back then, right? In 2018, 2019, there was no narrative about this online thing. It was still go to college, right? It's changed a lot after COVID, but back in 2018, it was just, you know, everyone's hammering that into your brain. But I took a second. I was thinking, man, I don't see myself going anywhere with this college thing, right? I was, I had a 1.5 GPA. I never saw myself working at a cubicle in a nine to five job. I never saw myself as an engineer. And I, I never saw myself making enough money to live the life that I wanted from doing that, right? And at the same time, I was working in some minimum wage job at Cricket Wireless, making around $11 an hour working at that job. And I just reached a point where... I felt hopeless. Like I felt like I was going nowhere in my life. You know, I felt like I was just going to be struggling for the rest of my life. I was going to be working at these jobs. I was failing in college. I'm probably not going to get a job from there. So it wasn't the best situation to be in. And then one day I just really wanted to take control of my situation. So I didn't, I, I wanted to stop blaming other people, all my situations, because I was starting to see online, all these different people making money through these different ventures, right? Through e-commerce, through affiliate marketing, Amazon, all these different things, right? And the one thing about me is, you know, a lot of people were telling me, oh, that's a scam. That's a scam. Don't even go after that. That's a scam. Again, I took my own critical thinking. I took a look at it. I was thinking to myself, these people are selling products online. How is it a scam? Right? There's no scam in here. Walmart sells products all the time that they buy for cheaper and they sell it for more. So how is this a scam? I was like, this is not a scam. I want to really get into this. So I started watching videos, YouTube videos about Shopify dropshipping, which is where you sell products without ever holding the inventory. And I appealed to that idea a lot because I didn't have money to go and spend a lot of money on inventory, right? With Shopify dropshipping, you can literally get started with less than $100. You know, the website is basically free at the start. You just need to spend a couple a couple dollars on domains and things like that. So that was perfect for me because I didn't have any money whatsoever. I was living paycheck to paycheck. So I started getting into it. I was learning it. I spent about three months learning this uh, business model. And then finally, I was like, okay, I want to actually apply this. I want to start doing some work. I want to try it out on my own. So I started doing some websites here and there. The first month I tried to sell these colorful phone cases. I found them on AliExpress for $2. I was trying to sell them for $20. I spent a month trying to sell those, completely failed. Second month, I was trying to sell these steel straws, right? I was thinking, oh, no one wants to use plastic straws anymore. Everyone cares about the environment. I tried to sell steel straws. I spent two months doing that, nothing, not a single dime. Fourth month, I was trying to sell this automatic toothbrush where you put it in your mouth and it brushes your teeth for you somehow. I don't even think that thing worked, bro. <laughs> and I tried to sell that thing for a month. Boom, no sales either. So I want you to picture this, Lewis. I'm sitting there, fourth month in this, still failing in college, still broke, living paycheck to paycheck. And I had lost a bunch of money trying to do this for the past four months. So you can only imagine how that felt. Most people would have just given up right then and there. But I knew there was something there, so I didn't give up. So I moved on to my fourth product, and at that time, everyone was going crazy over the AirPods, right? 
it, when they first dropped, if you remember that. Everyone was wearing the AirPods, especially on campus. All the kids were talking about it. So they were getting hot at the time. And I noticed that trend. So I was like, I want to get a piece of this pie. I want to start selling these wireless earbuds. You know, I'm sure I can find a high quality supplier that can ship out these earpods to my customers. So I found this one supplier that had them and he was willing to ship them to anyone in the world for around $16. And I ordered a sample and I noticed they literally sounded better than AirPods. My friend had AirPods and I, I tried both of them and the $16 ones sounded better than the AirPods. I was like, we have something over here. So I made the website really quick for the headphones and I listed them for $65, right? So I was getting them for $16. I was selling them for $65. I set up the website, I ran the advertisements, and I literally completely forgot about it because I've done it so many times now. I wasn't expecting anything. I was expecting for it to fail just like every other store, but it didn't. One store, I was uh, one day I was just sitting there and my roommates, they were all around me in my college dorm. And I was sitting there, I was playing Fortnite. That's when it was hot at the time, right? And my phone was on the desk next to me. And while I was playing, all of a sudden I hear my phone go, cha-ching. I was like, what the hell is that sound? My friends, they're all looking at me. I'm looking at them. I'm like looking at my phone. I'm like, what the hell was that? I lift my phone up. I look at it and it says, your online store has a new order for $65. I was sitting there. I was shocked, bro. I, I, my jaw literally dropped. I was looking at it. I was like, is this real? You know, is this a scam or something? Did I actually just get $65? And I look and someone had ordered the headphones for me and gave me $65 for these headphones that would only cost me $16 to get shipped to him. So I had literally just made $50 profit while I was sitting there playing the video game, right? And at that time, it would take me five hours at my minimum wage job to make $50. And I had just made that sitting there playing video games. So you can only imagine the change of perspective you have when that happens to you. Because you only believe one thing at one point, right? Well, at that point, I only believed you can make money through a job. But me making that first sale completely broke all of my beliefs. Because I had just made that money while sitting there playing video games instead of working for five hours. So that's when I knew we had something. I kept working on the store, working on the store. And about a month and a half later, two months, we were doing about $10,000 a month with the, the headphone store. Once I saw I was doing 10K a month, it's like, all right, this was my goal. Now I can drop out of college, I can quit my job, and I can go full-time on this thing. And I did, and here we are four years later. It's an incredible transformation story, and there, there's so much like good stuff there. I think you know, one really subtle thing that I picked up on, you, the way you described like noticing the AirPod trend, then you're like, then I just spun up a website. You know what I mean? On day one, month one, when you're creating your first store, right? Creating the website is not just like something you rattle off, right? That's like, that's a project. That's like a big obstacle. But then after you go three, three stores, you're like, okay, website, logo, domain, check, 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 check. That's like the first, I don't know, 25 minutes, an hour and a half. But like that for your first three stores, it's uh, like your first week and a half, right? So it's all the learnings and all of the different pieces get compressed mm. into what each was its own project, right? Became its own task, and it just gets compressed smaller and smaller and smaller down. And, you know, this is something in a previous conversation you and I had where a lot of people would see, you know, after failing at three stores, I'm bad at e-commerce. I'm never going to make a website work versus you're like, okay, I've learned from three stores. I'm three stores closer to making a successful store than everyone else who's just starting. Exactly, man. And that's such a big thing I see with beginners when I talk to them all the time. They're on their second store, their second store fails, and they feel so demotivated that they just completely quit after that, right? And they never come back to it. What I tell them is, if you tried it two times, now is the worst time to quit because now you have way more experience when, when you first started, right? So when you first started, you started doing it and you were working hard at it. All of a sudden, now that you have more experience, you're going to give up? Why? It's like that one picture, if you've ever seen it, where it's a guy mining. He's getting really close to the diamonds. And then there's literally one, just one layer between him and the diamonds and he just walks away and he gives up, Right? So it's kind of a similar situation with that when you see a beginner doing that, you know, once you start those stores and they fail, that's when you need to go even harder because now you have momentum going. Like you said, right at the start, it would take me a week to do a website, right? But because I had those three stores under my belt, now that when I had the idea that was going to make me successful, I was able to implement it really fast because I had the experience from those old stores. But let's say I ran into the headphones idea without starting those other stores, I would not be able to execute on it. Yep. It would have taken you too long or so much could have gone wrong. Exactly. But it comes back to what you're saying about the school system in general. 
right? It's just so many different ways of structuring your mind about understanding learning and understanding outcomes and just completely different paradigms for, for perceiving the world, right? So a big one you talked about is disconnecting time from income, right? It's not about how many hours I work and how much I earn. It's about I set up the system, right, that profitably ships a product to someone else based on these ads that are running, even if I'm playing video games. It's like a divorce from your time and your income. That's a big one, right? And then another one is just the non-linear correlation between time invested in something. This is going to be different. There's a subtlety, but the time invested in, in the projects and the income, right? So it's like month one, zero income, month two, zero income, month three, zero income, month four, $500, month five, $10,000, mm -hmm. right? There's no, like the trend line is just not predictable there at all versus, you know, you work in an internship, for example, right? So it's like month one, three grand, month two, they maybe they put bump you up $2 an hour, four grand, five grand. And it's like, okay, now you're a full-time employee, six grand. And then it's like 3% better per year for the rest of your life. And it's just that predictable stair step. But for you, it's just, it's these step changes, right? It's like everything accumulates, but you can't see, it doesn't amount to anything until it reaches a tipping point. And then all of a sudden it's 10X more. So it's nothing, it's no improvement. And then just a 10 times improvement. Has that been your experience as well? Like beyond just that initial zero to five month period? 100%. And that's the, one of the main things that I love about business is that, is that it's unpredictable, right? Us as human beings, we love things that are unpredictable, right? So they did a test on a rat, right? where every time the, the rat would press the button, it would get a pleasure signal in its brain, right? And it would do it every single time, right? With that rat, when it was pressing the button over and over again, it eventually got bored of it because it expected the result from it, right? But then they did a different experiment where they had a rat and it presses a button and it could randomly shock them or it can randomly give them the pleasure signals, right? So what the rat would do is it started pressing the button and the rat got extremely addicted to pressing that button because it was random. It didn't know what's going to happen, right? Either it could shock it, either it could give it a pleasure signal, right? So that tells us something about us as human beings. We don't like things that are predictable. That's why people love gambling so much because it's very unpredictable what's going to happen. So us as human beings, we naturally like that, right? We don't like something where we know what's going to happen every single year. That's boring, right? I personally, I love things that involve risk where you could either make nothing or you can make a lot of money. That's the way I see life because life is just too short to live it in a very predictable way. And I don't think you can have as much enjoyment as if you were doing something where you were taking more risk. Because at the end of the day, life is risky, no matter what you do. I can walk out of this building right now and get hit by a truck and I'm gone, right? So no matter what you're doing, you're taking a risk. So if you're going to live life, you might as well take the biggest risk to get the biggest rewards. Exactly. And that's another thing people don't think about either is the, you know, the skewed distribution of outcomes, right? you could spend $100 on your ads and that could literally lead to $10,000. But at worst case scenario, the most you could lose from that is $100. So the downside is capped, right? So I was telling you about the coaching program I bought for like $10,000. And the most I could lose from that is $10,000. But it could literally teach me things that lead to millions of dollars. Like it could help me like get over some beliefs that are making me like slow my progress in the business. It could teach me like a, a script that I could use in a video sales letter that could increase my conversion rate on like, you know, these projects that have a lifetime value of $10,000. It could like increase my conversion rate by 20%. The traffic strategies or my close rate, you could say, could teach me traffic strategies that now this video sales letter that's converting at 20% higher than I was before. I also am now converting on my cold emails, right? And converting from 20% response rate to 30% response rate. So I have more people coming in a funnel that's higher converting. Oh, and also they taught me how to restructure my offer so I can increase my approach. I'm now I'm just like getting into agency business model, which is kind of separate from what we're discussing here. But the point is, it's like worst case scenario, worst case scenario, I give them $10,000. I don't learn anything, whatever, $10,000 gone. But best case scenario on the upside, it's like it could literally 10x my business, teach me how to operationalize it so I can sell it one day. So then there's a multiple effect in there. And it's like unbelievable if you're willing to like take a risk and bet on yourself, what the distribution of outcomes can be in your favor. You just have to, again, back to the unpredictability, I'm saying all these hypothetical ways it could pay off, right? They're not promising me that they'll boost all of those things by 20% on all the across the board, but I see the possibility and I'm comfortable like navigating the ambiguity to see if it'll happen or not. You're taking a bet on yourself and that's basically what you do as an entrepreneur. You're not going to take a bet on some other person's company. You want to take a bet on yourself because you believe in yourself so much. You took that $10,000 you invested in the mastermind because you believe that you're going to do the work necessary to get the money out of there, right? Mm -hmm. And when you say worst case scenario, you lose $10,000. I don't even think that's a worst case scenario. I think that's a good case scenario. You know, you want to know what worst case scenario is? 
I get hit by a truck outside with you? No. Okay. You turn 70 years old and you realize you never chase your dream. That's worst case scenario. Exactly. I agree with that. And this is something we were talking about earlier with courses is there's only 20 six month chunks of your twenties, right? Not that everyone listening to this is like in their twenties or thirties or teens, whatever, but every decade of your life, there's only 26 month chunks of like, there's no, there's no way around that. And I'm buying this program thinking, is this going to help me get to where I'd be six months from now? A lot faster, like 10 times faster and hundred percent, right? Cause I'm getting an hour per day with all of these brilliant people who've done exactly what I want to do. And I'm like, this is going to accelerate. This is literally taking me from wasting one of my only 20 six month chunks of my life and condensing that to one month. And like the value of that is there's just, this is such an amazing time in my life to like do the things I want to do and to waste it when I have the money to not skip steps by paying an expert to teach me. It just seemed so ludicrous to me once I reframed it that way. 100% man. And you know, I just believe that time is our most scarce asset. I don't believe that it's money. Money is literally unlimited. Someone prints it in a machine. That's not, right? that's not even a joke. Yeah. But with time, that's something that God gives us. Mm-hmm. God is not going to give you any more time than what's already written for you. So that's literally the most precious, the most scarce asset. So if you're doing something with your day where you don't feel like you're reaching your full potential, I highly suggest you look into something where you are reaching your full potential. Mm-hmm. Because if you're doing that, you're doing a disservice to your time. And it really is subjective, right? I don't want to sound like very preachy to people. Like if you work a job and you fully enjoy it and you think you're doing good in the world, that's amazing. You're doing great, right? But if you're a person where you're you're always negative, you're like, oh, I have to go to this job. I have to work this. That's the person I would tell, look, the money's not worth it. $15 an hour, $20 an hour, $25 an hour, whatever it is, it's not worth it. That's something they're printing on, on the daily, Find something that gives you passion in life where every day you wake up, you're ready to jump out of bed. You're ready to work on it. When you're working on it, it gives you adrenaline rushes. It makes you feel happy. It's a roller coaster. You don't want something that's linear because you're going to forget your life like that. But if you're always having events where, oh, this is amazing. And then this happens, this happens. You're always going to have stories to tell. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be enjoying your time. You're enjoying your life. You know you're reaching your full potential because that that time is something you're never going to get back. Yeah, I think I want to ask you about ways that you're investing to free up more of your time. Uh, Cause I know you have a lot of ways that you do that, which is really interesting. But I think one other point I want to make for people on the note of like investing in yourself. Cause I think a lot of people may not have like $10,000 handy, but I know a lot of people listening to this might be on cash app buying hundred dollars of Bitcoin here or there, or it might be on Robinhood buying like a, a share of Apple or a share of Amazon. But the best case scenario for that is, you know, it goes up by like 10 to 20% in the next three years. But like what if you invested that hundred dollars in a piece of knowledge that like makes you the ability to increase your hourly rate from $30 an hour to $50 an hour. Like that is something that just blows my mind that people do less and less of and something I'm continuing to do. There's this article I read. I highly recommend people read it. It's called, you know, beat the market by investing in yourself by Nat Eliason. It is like the most profound way that I've like really restructured my thinking on. Cause again, best case scenario 20% 20% return on investment of like you buy hundred dollars worth of Apple, maybe five years from now you have $120 worth of Apple, Ooh, right? Amazing. Yeah. But it's like, okay. Or you spend $200, you go to a conference and it teaches you something to, instead of like making $50 per hour, you're making $65 per hour. And that next week you made an extra thousand dollars, you know what I mean? Or an extra $500 would actually be the effective hourly, not important, but that's just the, the point I wanted to make there that like, it's not on the scale of $10,000. It's like, if you're literally buying any amount of stocks right now, now obviously I'm not a financial advisor and I just don't want to have people come at me for like giving financial advice here, but those shares we're hoping to make an extra 20 bucks over the next five years. That's freaking lame. Mm-hmm. It's like buy something to increase your earning potential immediately. 100%. I mean, if someone has less than a hundred thousand dollars in their bank account, they shouldn't be considering investing in anything other than themselves. That's period. You know, no stock is going to make you a millionaire. Yeah, we're stopping there. That is the only thing you need to take from this podcast. But back to your personal investments to free up more time in your week. What are you doing to have more time for your business, for yourself, right? Because also not just investments in like, if you invest something to save time, it's not necessarily so you can work more, right? So it might be so you can relax more thoroughly. So when you work, you're working harder. Like, What are you currently spending amounts of money that people might say that's crazy, but for you, it's so justified because it makes yeah. you more effective day to day. 
Yeah, so on food, like I never go grocery shopping. I never go because it, let's think of the grocery shopping and the cooking thing, right? Because this is literally the biggest time sucker that people have. And it makes me mad sometimes, especially if it's let's a young get, Let's get angry. Let's, yeah. there's, there's, <laughs> because let's think of it, right? You need to eat. What, you, what are you going to do? You're going to get up. You're going to go downstairs. You're going to get in your car. You're going to turn on your car. You're going to drive 15 minutes to the grocery store. You're going to spend five minutes looking for parking. Get out of your car. And waiting for old people to, out, to cross the street. Yeah. Dude, that drives Pull me out crazy. the car. You walk so slow. Go inside the grocery store. Walk around the grocery store for 45 minutes, picking all the things that you want. Put them in the car. Go to the cash register. Wait in line. Get the stuff. Go to your car. Put them in your car. Go home. Sort it. Cut it up. Cook it. Eat it. Clean it. Oh, that's four hours. Gone. Every week. Every week. Probably even more every day. You're going to need to cook it up. Cook it. Put it in. Clean it. Every single day. That's two, three hours gone from your day because you need to eat three times a day. Right? The way I see that, I'm like, why the hell would I spend all that time? If you put it together, that's probably like 200, three hours, 300 hours in a year. Right? That's six weeks gone from your year out of the 52 that you have. And think about how many you're spending sleeping, right? So that by itself, you can stop all of that by simply ordering a $13 meal on DoorDash with two buttons. So that's my trade-off in my brain. Would I rather spend $13 on this meal on DoorDash or go through, waste four hours, go grocery shopping, cutting shit up and eating it, right? That's one example of me saving time. Let's look at another one. For example, getting your hair cut, right? Getting in your car, driving 20 minutes to the barber, sitting in the chair, waiting for him to get done with his other client, then waiting an hour, getting your hair cut for an hour, then getting in your car again, driving 20 minutes, going back home, right? Why would you do that? Spend the extra 50 bucks and just have your barber come to you. That way he can be cutting your hair while you're sitting there and you're working on your business, right? So that right there, you just saved yourself two hours that you could have put into your business because you're not going and driving to this person to get a haircut. Another example, cleaning, right? Cleaning your apartment. Spend two, three hours twice a week cleaning your apartment. Why? Hire someone to come twice a week for $200 a week to come clean your apartment for you. That way you can focus on your business. And the main thing with this, the main benefit doesn't come from just saving you from having to do it. It saves you the mind space, right? Because if you're constantly thinking, oh, what am I going to eat you next? You got to go to the grocery store to buy your yeah. cleaning supplies too. Exactly, right? So you're always going to be thinking, oh, what am I going to eat next? What am I going to eat next? How am I going to cook it? What am I going to go to the grocery store? What do I need to buy? That's all you mental space. the oven, right? Exactly. Do I need to set a timer? Exactly. And that's all mental space that can be used so much better in your business, right? Because let's picture this. Let's say you go, you do grocery shopping and all that stuff for three hours. But in an alternate universe, if you spent that three hours on your business, you could have had the idea that finally blew up your business. That's, imagine, that's the three hours from yeah, gold, right? Not the three feet out. from gold, but the three hours from gold. Imagine missing out on that idea just because you wanted to go to the grocery store. Because you needed some garlic and onions. Does not sound fun to me. No. Bro, you'd be proud of me. Uh, this morning, I had a, you know, I bought a Kindle Fire tablet because I bought a piano and then I needed a thing to like put the piano app so I can learn the piano. Uh, and then I just ended up getting the iPad instead because I'm like, if I'm going to spend money on a tablet, I might as well get the, the right tablet. Uh, so I have to return the Kindle. And I was on Amazon today and it was on my to-do list to like take care of this return. It's like, go to the UPS store, $0, they'll print the label, we'll come to your house, $8. I'm like, dude, I can, I don't have to, it'll literally take me 30 minutes to go downstairs, pull my car out of the garage, now that's going to make me have to go to a gas station sooner, and then go there, park, find, I don't know where this UPS store is, there could be a line, it's just a whole, a whole mess. They will literally, for, I was like, that's a bargain, I was like, I would have paid like half. I would have literally given $40 to avoid that errand. Because now it's like also, like there's a client, work, like there's client project I have to do this weekend that I'm making like several thousand dollars for doing. So it's like, I'm going to get an extra hour done on that project and have the package taken care of for only $8. I'm like, that How is you? money well spent. If I were you, I wouldn't even worry about returning it. I just <laughs> you just keep there. the Kindle. Because <laughs> you don't want to think about that, man. Yeah. That's mental space. Like you're going on the FedEx. You're like stressing about that. You're like, oh, where do I put it? Is he going to come? Do I have to open the door for him? Is he going to be downstairs? Is he going to need a code? Yeah. It's not even worth it for the 80 bucks that you're going to get in the refund or whatever it is, right? That's just the way that I see things. Yeah. I mean, maybe you're right about that. I'll, I'll, I'll look at the email and decide if it's uh, worth changing or not. And that's there's always kind of like, that's the goal is to continue to like ascend what the value of your time is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like literally the half an hour, is that worth $80? And it very well could be. So 
Yeah. That's a half an hour. You're never going to get back, Lewis. Bro, that's why you got to hang out with uh, entrepreneurs, listen to podcasts because they force you to, to keep loving up. That's the other thing too about the program I joined. I'm like, I'm just surrounding myself with another group of 100 people who think bigger than I do. And I know that wears off on me. 100%. You never want to be the biggest person in your group because you're, you're not. You're gonna <laughs> so I'm like the smallest business that's in the, the group, best feels thing. like. Yeah. That's the best position to be in because eventually you're going to catch up to them. Yeah. And then you're going to need a bigger group because you're going to become the top in your group. So where are you hanging out to get challenged and to grow your mindset and to think bigger? Yeah, so really I love to go to events, especially events that cost a lot of money because the more money they they cost, the the type of people that are going to be in there are going to be higher level, yep. right? So I want to be in a room with people that are willing to spend $5,000 on a ticket because I know any person in there that was willing to spend $5,000 on a ticket is doing something very interesting and I can learn a lot from them, right? Um, so that's where I love to network with people. I'm in masterminds, obviously. Um, I like to always reach out to people that are doing better than me because I always never want to be the biggest person in my group because that's when you stop learning. Let's address, we were kind of getting to some more advanced stuff, which is obviously useful. And I think there's even going to like hundred dollar conferences and things like that can be super useful as you like kind of ascend the ladder of the game, if you want to call it Mm -hmm. that. What are some shifting gears a little bit, like common beginner mistakes you see people making either in entrepreneurship or in e-commerce that we haven't like addressed? So people don't have business problems. They have personal problems, right? The problem is usually not in the business, it's in the person. The person is spending too much time on TikTok. The person is spending too much time eating junk food. The person doesn't exercise. The person doesn't have a good self-image. The person doesn't spend time learning, doesn't spend time reading, doesn't spend time around the right people. Because I promise if you're doing all those things, you're going to get success. I don't care who you are. Because eventually it's going to rub off on you. You're going to have to take action. You're going to take action. You're going to get results, right? But if you're the type of person that's just spending all day watching YouTube videos, watching TikTok videos, going out and eating junk food, drinking alcohol, coming back hungover, spending a week hungover, you're never going to see results. In every area of Mm -hmm. life. That's something I'm very thankful about is that I've never touched alcohol in my life. I've never tried it. I've never been drunk. I've never tasted it before, right? So that's something I'm missing out. Yeah, I'm very thankful for that because I, I see how big of a distraction that is. And even one of my mentors, his name is Sam Ovens, he mentioned, because he used to drink, right? He mentioned when he was drinking, he was doing about a million dollars a year, which is cool, right? But once he stopped, and he said the main thing that allowed him to go to $20 million a year was quitting alcohol, just simply stopping drinking. Because drinking, even though I don't do it, I can tell how much of a distraction, how big of a detriment it's going to have on someone's life, right? I've seen it right in front of me. Because what happens is, Let's say someone, they, they use alcohol as their enjoyment vice, right? Oh, I can, only be, I can only enjoy my time when I'm drinking. So what are they doing now? I can only drink on the weekends, right? So what you're doing is Friday, Saturday, you're getting drunk as hell, right? And now Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and probably Wednesday, you're not going to feel that good. <laughs> you're going to feel terrible. You're going to feel terrible. And you're not, not 16 do, anymore. It's yeah. Like, yeah. You're not going to do good work during those four days, four or five days. Now... That it, it wasn't only Friday night and Saturday night that's gone now. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is gone now. So your you're five out of the seven days in the week are just done for, where you can't really do any good work. And now Thursday, you're getting prepared for Friday to start drinking again on Friday. And it's just a cycle that repeats itself where you think you need this poison to enjoy yourself when you don't really need it, right? It's just something that you got used to growing up. And now you think that's the only way where you can enjoy yourself. And worst on Thursday, you're spending time driving to the liquor store to buy the alcohol, put it in your car, walk it upstairs, bring it up the elevator, put it in the fridge, buy the limes, chop the limes. It's like you're either spiraling up or you're uh, spiraling down. Yeah, there's no in between. And, you know, I can't really say that I'm the perfect human being. We all have some sort of vices that aren't good for us, right? For example, I'm drinking coffee right now. I know I shouldn't be drinking coffee, right? But you kind of have to identify how much something is hurting you. And you're the only person that can know that. You're the only person can know your drinking habits and how much you think about it and how much it affects you, right? So the person has to do their own math on that. And when it comes to these things, you need to understand the power of dopamine, right? If I can tell someone to understand one thing about their mind, it's their dopamine, Now, dopamine is the chemical that gives you enjoyment when you're going after the things that are going to improve your life, right? So let's say you're really thirsty, you drink water, 
your body gives you dopamine so that it can reward you for surviving, right? And the thing about alcohol and drugs is that it gives you artificial dopamine. So this is fake dopamine that's, you know, signaling that you're signaling that you're doing something and you're on the right track, right? So you need to understand that your body is just addicted to the feeling of it being on the right track, right? So if you're working on something that you're passionate about and you're making progress with it, you're going to get so much more dopamine than alcohol can ever give you in your whole life. Let's do some rapid fire questions here for these last 10 minutes or so. What is your kind of big vision for this next, let's say your primary 2023 goal and then primary like five year goal? Primary 2023 goal is I want to exit one of my companies and just sell it off so that I can focus more on improving other people's lives. I love public speaking. I love helping people with their mindset because I understand that mindset is the biggest thing that can change your life, the way you think about things, right? And I truly believe that if I can get my message out to as many people as possible, I'm going to change a lot of lives. And that's my goal is to change a lot of lives. So the goal is to, you know, within the next year, sell the business so you don't have to worry about running the business to like afford if it takes you some period of time to figure out how to profitably be that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I sell my business, it won't really be about money anymore. It's more just on helping people. Yeah, that's awesome. Even though that's what we're doing right now, you know, I really want to just put the whole focus on the business, on the mindset part, because right now it's more about the e-commerce part and selling stuff online, um, which is great. And we're doing great work with that. But I feel like for me to truly scale, to reach everyone in the world, I have to just dial in on the mindset because not everyone wants to do e-commerce. What has been your favorite story of someone that you've helped build a store, kind of like a transformation Mm -hmm. from one of your students, from one of your training programs and coaching you do? Definitely. So my favorite one has to be Keith. Um, Keith is my man. Shout out to Keith. So Keith came to me and he had barely ever used the computer before. I'm talking barely used a computer, let alone started an online business, right? So Keith, he decided to work with me and I got him as a student with me. He went through my program. He hopped on a couple coaching calls and around a week and a half after he joined and started working with me, he had his store doing $100 a day, selling two products every single day at $50 each. And this was a person, Lewis, that I promise you barely knew how to use Windows, barely knew how to use computers. And the reason I love that story so much is because it showed me no matter who the person is, no matter how much experience they have, no matter where they are in life, if they go through and they're put, they put their head to something with learning from someone that's done what they actually want to do, they can see the results that they want. What's been the biggest difference living in the United States versus living in Jordan or a couple observations? Yeah, so I'm very thankful to be able to live here. Obviously, I miss Jordan. You know, that's where I grew up. That's where I have a lot of my family, a lot of my friends, and I have nothing bad to say about Jordan. Um, It was a beautiful place to grow up. The culture around me was beautiful. The people around me were beautiful. So I'd say there's pros and cons to both places. Like one of the cons is, you know, of living in America is people are less spiritual here, right? Versus in Jordan where it's a very spiritual country. Like everyone is very spiritual. They believe in faith. You know, and it's a society that's built on that. Um, With America, you see less of that. You see a lot of degeneracy, honestly, in America, (laughs) right? That's something I don't Uh, like. We're recording this in Scottsdale. There's plenty of degeneracy here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think that's somewhere where I want my kids to grow up around. But here's the thing. On the flip side, there's more opportunity in this country than anywhere in the world, right? In Jordan, if you're a doctor that spent 20 years studying, you're making around $800 a month. I want you to imagine that, Lewis. You spent 20 years of your life trying to become a doctor just so you can make $800 a month and make ends meet, right? There's not much opportunity over there. But in America, you can be a 15-year-old making millions of dollars a year. It's insane. Mm -hmm. And I think the degeneracy here ties in with the fact of why people aren't taking advantage of that. It is. Yeah, it's so the polarity is so extreme here. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm thankful because I came from a place where there's not a lot of degeneracy and not a, uh, not a lot of opportunity. So when I moved to a place where there's a extreme lot of opportunity. Extreme degeneracy and extreme opportunity. I was able to stay away from the de- degeneracy and focus on the opportunity. Yeah, that's, a, that's another mic drop moment for sure. What was the closest you've come to quitting in kind of your entrepreneurial journey? 
last night. (laughs) 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 See, like, you're always going to face challenges where you're going to be thinking, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? No matter who you are. I guarantee you Jeff Bezos has those feelings, right? But us entrepreneurs, what we're really good at is controlling our emotions because we understand your emotions aren't the good signal to go after, right? Emotions aren't signals, right? You need to use your mind. You need to meditate to to know what the right decision is, right? If you go based off of emotions, you're not going to make good decisions because your body can fire any kind of emotions at any time, right? And if you go based off your emotions, you're just following what your body is telling you. Us entrepreneurs, what we like to do is we don't follow our emotions. We follow our logic, right? If something makes sense, right? Let's say, you know, when I was first starting, I could have quit after the first three products failed, right? But logically, it was like, what else am I going to do, yep. right? Am I going to go back to school and live that life? No, I'd rather keep trying at this and failing because I was enjoying doing it, even though I was failing, right? So you never want to chase your emotions, no matter who you are, because your emotions can change all the time. And If you're just constantly following your emotions, you're letting something else control you. Tell me about joining the the Two Comma Club at ClickFunnels. What was that experience like? It was great. So I've always had that goal. You know, I would see what people. What is the Two Comma Club for people who? Generated over a million dollars from one website. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was great. I've always had that goal. You know, Russell Brunson has probably been my top mentor for the past four years. I've learned a lot from him. Um, so, you know, I've always had the goal of being able to go on stage with him and accept the reward. But at the end of the day, you know, I always like to say it's not really about the results. It's about the journey, right? Um, You never want to look for this little thing because it's a high that wears off after 10 minutes. You know, you're happy about it for 10 minutes and then you forget about it. You know, it's cool. I have a And now it's just a plaque hanging in your house. Just a plaque hanging in your house, right? What I like to focus on is the day-to-day because you're always going to be doing these things 24-7. And if you can enjoy that process, you're going to enjoy your life. I like that. One really disciplined process. We talked about this earlier, discipline and processes a lot of kind of things coming together here but a lot of people don't know that you used to be very overweight mm. uh tell me thanks for sharing <laughs> <laughs> uh look at you now uh look so good but what was that journey that's a big journey you were you went from 300 pounds to like 200 pounds in like the span of a year how did you pull that one off yeah so i guess it all comes down to discipline man you no matter what you're doing in your life whether it's business working on your health the relationships It all comes down to discipline and being able to say no to things, right? If you can train that muscle in your head of saying no to things, you can do anything you want in life, no matter what it is. You want to lose 100 pounds, make a million dollars, whatever it is. If you put yourself to it and you say that I'm going to achieve this, no matter what happens, you're going to achieve it, right? And the thing is with things like that, with making a million dollars or losing 100 pounds, the first couple of months are always going to be the hardest. But if you can get over that hurdle of the first couple of months, now it turns into a lifestyle to the point where you don't even need to think about it. Nowadays, I don't think, of, oh, I need to lose weight, right? I never have that thought because I put myself into a disciplined mode where it's almost impossible for me to gain weight and become obese again because now it's a lifestyle. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. So that's what I would recommend someone to do is don't look at it as a diet. Look at it as you trying to turn it into a lifestyle where doing it becomes automatic, when you're doing it automatically, you're going to see exponential results. What were the specific habits that you put in that lifestyle that made you lose weight? Yeah, so before I only would get my enjoyment from food, right? That's the only dopamine source that I had. And I didn't know anything else, right? I didn't know that you can get dopamine from exercising or working out or working on something you're passionate about. So I was kind of a binge eater and, you know, I was had mental health issues where I was spending 10 hours a day playing video games, right? And, you know, when you're playing video games, you're sitting all day, you're not really exercising, you're eating a lot of food while you're doing it. So, you know, I was kind of just stuck in that lifestyle until I figured out that you can also get enjoyment from other things like exercising, right? And when you start con- get, getting those connections in your brain where you connect exercising to feeling good, I became addicted to that right? And when I tied not having a full stomach and having an empty stomach to feeling good, now I become addicted to that. Now I don't really want to have the lethargic feeling of eating so much and just feeling like crap. I hated that feeling from that because I realized when you have an empty stomach, you just feel super energetic. You feel happy. Your body is burning fat. And I noticed that and I got addicted to that. And when you get addicted to that, you don't want to go back to the old ways. Yeah. We got to be careful that doesn't turn into an eating disorder where you just don't eat but it sounds like you've done a fine job of managing that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I will just eat like 50% of my calories in the last like 10 minutes of the day. Just mm-hmm. like a huge mass gainer shake, like light meals throughout the day. So I have, because the, that lethargy is like my least favorite thing in the entire world. I cannot stand the lethargy of a huge meal. Mm-hmm. 100%. So right. it's like end of the day, just get a disgusting amount of food and then just fall asleep. So I don't have to deal with the lethargy. And I don't even honestly like, you know, if you don't eat a lot, it doesn't mean you have an eating disorder. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, if you think back to our caveman days, um, they were not eating a lot. They didn't yeah. have food on their disposable 24-7, right? What they would do is they would spend the majority of the day hungry, right? They would be hungry for most of the day, right? Until they finally get that hunt and they hunt an animal, they hunt a boar, they hunt a sheep or whatever it is, and they feast and they fill their stomach till, till they're absolutely full. And now they, they go all the way until the next day until they hunt again and they eat it. So the diet that I do is called intermittent fasting and it follows our exact ancestors diet. So our ancestors diet, you know, they weren't eating 24 seven like we are. They were going hungry for most of the day so that it can motivate them to go for the hunt. And my example, the hunt is the business, right? You know, yeah. I don't really go, I don't have to go out there and hunt for we food. We some time now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I love hunting, but yeah, you know, you, you don't have to go out there and hunt for the food any, anymore, but you're hunting for other things in life. And then when you achieve those things, now you can have that big meal, you can fill your stomach up. And um, that's just the diet that I love. Let's make some good clickbait here. What are some niches, some products, some areas within e-commerce that I know you're primarily now teaching others how to do it, but if you're like how to start over, get scrappy again, launch a store, what are some niches, some trends that really have your interest at this point in time, December 2022, January 2023? Great question. So I'm a big biohacker guy. I okay. love biohacking stuff. Like I love the saunas. I love the ice bath, the the, the infrared chambers, the, the floats. Like I just love that type of stuff and I'm obsessed with it. Um, so if I would start a business, I would start it around there. Like for example, selling saunas, right? I truly believe that's an amazing business because guess what, who wants saunas? Wealthy Rich people. people that care about their health, right? And those type of people, they don't care how much money they spend. They're not penny pinchers where, oh, it's $10, $20. They don't care. If they see something can bring them a return on their investment, they're going to spend money on it. So if I was to start a business, I would start a business that's related to the biohacking niche for rich people that are looking to improve their performance. Because if you tap into a market that has a lot of money, you can sell them a lot of stuff for a very high price and make a very healthy margin on it. Uh, dude, there's some serious upsells you can do with the sauna. Some sauna towels and some sauna equipment and some... Upsell them a steam room. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. And then like a partnership with Lifetime Fitness. You could go crazy with that. 100%. And when it comes to biohacking, like I said, rich people, they'll spend money on it because they understand they're going to make their money back. Yeah. And that's the thing about drop shipping too, where right? you don't have to have the money to go buy an inventory of 10 saunas. You don't. Yeah. Just get that sale and then fulfill it through a partner. All you need is a nice website. Yeah. How did you learn marketing? Because that's how I think of dropshipping. Dropshipping is just the arbitrage is just you're better at marketing it than the distributor, than the manufacturer. That's all you're adding to the process, right, is marketing. How did you learn marketing? So it's not about the marketing. It's about the product. The part, the product kind of markets itself, right? Okay. So the most of the work is done by identifying who you're trying to sell to and the benefit that you're going to bring to them. Well, that's, that's the where marketing. The, yeah, that's, I mean, that's where the, yeah. where most of the work goes into, right? It's not, you know, the Facebook ad dashboard, where to click over here or over there. It's mostly about knowing who you're selling and what you're why you're selling to them and why they're going to pull out their credit card and buy. For example, if I'm selling a sauna and I'm targeting uh, 60-year-old rich dudes, right? The way that I'm going to market that to them is, look, by using a sauna every single day or five days a week, you're going to decrease your chance at getting a heart disease by 40%. Now, automatically, you just did the marketing because the person's going to be thinking, what's worth more to me? Having a heart attack or spending this $3,000 on a sauna? Living a bit longer or $2,000? $2,000 right? here. Boom, your marketing job is done. But if you don't know why someone's going to buy the thing you have or what's the value proposition, why are they going to pull out their credit card, what they're going to get out of it, you're not going to know how to market anything. I love that. If there's a 60-year-old man listening to this podcast who wants to learn a thing or two about the heart, we did an episode with Dr. Richard Schatz. He, <laughs> he co-invented the heart stent. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's somewhere like episode 60 to 70-ish. So, so check that one out if there's a 60-year-old man listening to this. Let's go. If you it. want a sauna, hit up Amr, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> no, don't hit me up. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> uh, but Amr, where are you most active online for people who 
want to learn more about e-commerce, who want to keep up with your personal brand, who want to keep up with your mindset stuff. Like where are you, if you are reachable, uh, where should people go if they like to this and want more from Amr and less from uh, the Lewis and Kyle show? Nowhere. I don't like social media. So no. that's one thing that I believe in as well. Social media is a big waste of time, right? So I'm not really on Instagram at all that much. You go to my Instagram, which is ecom underscore Amir. You're going to see I have three posts. I barely post on there, right? Um, so I like to practice what I preach and I preach don't do social media, right? Focus on the things that are going to improve your life and stay off of social media because that's just a toxic place to be on, right? Um, so, you know, I plan on launching a podcast soon because I like the long form content yeah. where someone can listen to it and learn a lot from it and implement it and, you know, actually see results in their life. Right. So I guess if you want to follow me, um, go on Instagram, ecom underscore Amir. I'm probably not going to post much, but if I do ever start a podcast, I'm going to email us too, right? People can get on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or they can go to our website. I own a company called Ecom Websites. If you guys ever want to start a website, um, we'll do it all for you for $20 so that you don't have to worry about designing the site yourself or making sure it looks professional. We'll get that done for you and you can go on our email list on there. Perfect. And that's how they'll find out if and when you drop a podcast. I'll make mention of it too, I'm sure. If and when uh, you make it happen. But Amr, this is a super fun time. Yeah, I'm glad we great. could do this today. Thank you so much for being here. Of course, I think man. The people are going to learn a lot from this one. Thank you. Of course. That's going to close out this conversation with Amir from Ecom Websites. Like I said at the beginning, this was so fun and I learned a ton from Amir and I still continue to do so. I'm lucky enough to call him a friend now uh, since the time has passed since we recorded this episode. But three specific takeaways from this conversation, and then I will let everyone go on to the next thing. The first one is just continuing to value your time very, very highly. When you have a business system, an hour invested in doing something like returning an Amazon package for $20, for $50, versus an extra hour coming up with a new partnership for your business, or a new marketing strategy, or a new advertisement, or a new product, can return thousands of dollars. And you have to believe to continue to invest in yourself that your time is genuinely worth a lot of money, and that is how you stop being distracted on trivial things and build a business that grows to the size of Amir's. Second takeaway is about the trend versus the hype. So I asked Amir about you know the future of e-commerce because you know back in 2017, I remember my freshman year of college seeing tons and tons of advertisements on YouTube about drop shipping and Alibaba and Shopify, and like I felt like that wave had kind of passed. But Amir kind of re-explains well the actual trend you know since 2017. Has more money been spent online or less money been spent online every single year? And of course, the answer is much more money has been spent online every single year since 2017. So even though maybe the hype has faded a little bit, the actual underlying global macro trend of e-commerce, of literally, what does e-commerce mean? Like online commerce, people spending money and choosing to purchase things online is growing at a tremendous pace. So the actual kind of signals economically are actually still very healthy and encouraging for starting a business in this space. My third takeaway is rethinking failure in kind of a super specific way. So Amir talks about not really finding any success with e-commerce until his fourth store. And a lot of people would look at that and say, okay, I started a store once, it failed. I started a store a second time, it failed. I started a store three times, it failed. Maybe I'm just not meant to create online stores. But Amir took that to mean I'm three stores closer to having figured this out than anybody else. Anyone else who wants to start an e-commerce now has to start three stores to know everything that I know. And I think that's a really healthy way to think about persistence in terms of continuing on the same path. So with my business, I've been working on it for several months now, and there's a lot of figured out, and there's a lot I haven't figured out. But now I'm six months closer to having it figured out than anybody who would want to start a similar business. And instead of thinking, oh, I didn't figure it out right away, I should be doing something else. It's no, it just takes time to figure these things out. And you go through a series of mistakes till you get closer to the right answer. Uh, so again, that is all I have to say for this conversation with Amir. Really grateful to him for spending time with us on the Lewis and Kyle Show today. If you want more from us, please make sure you're subscribed wherever you are watching, whether that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or somewhere else. Just click the subscribe button so you know about the next episode. And yeah, we publish one of these every single week. So I will see you next time. Thanks so much for listening. Please make sure to follow Amir on Instagram if you're interested in learning more from him. And I will see you in the next episode. Have a good day. Bye-bye.